Alright, stream preview is on. Game is up. There was a small tear about halfway through on there, which might be because I turned VSync off. But, I managed to get outside without the screen blacking out before. So I could actually properly appreciate how fucking pretty that is. Yeah, I can see that there's some, stair some tearing on it because of VSync being on. If it'll let me turn that on in game now. I can start slowly turning things back on and up. I hope. Turn to the main menu because it looks like VSync isn't listed in game. Turning OBS doesn't seem on. Uh, turning OBS on, which was the last thing I was worried about that might have been fucking with it, uh, does not appear to have caused any troubles. I seem to have actually finally fixed it, which I can uh, I can tell you it makes me very happy. Sorry, was in this list, but maybe I have to do that from uh, the control panel for NVIDIA. And I'll tell it to read the application again, I suppose. It's 3D application setting, apply. Do I need to restart it for that? Processing. No, it looks like I do not. Just in case, I'm going to exit and reopen Elden Ring. So that I can be 100% certain that if I suddenly acquire a problem that wasn't there 20 seconds ago, it's that I turned VSync back on. Because despite the article's insistence to the contrary, in my experience with games running up to this point, Turning VSync off has always been what helped. Then again, I've never had a problem with the screen tearing all but once. It's like, oddly enough, I recognized it as something that was primarily a graphical problem with uh, your computer's ability to sustain the graphics being displayed. So I've, I've hit that problem before. I just couldn't think of what it was right off the top of my head as soon as I looked at it. But it was something, because it was something that had happened like a very long time ago. Why is that so tiny? Oh, because it's, it is, uh, wow, that's impressive. The anti-cheat menu uh, was locked onto by OBS. That's normally like a completely separate application that you have to, uh, like that you wouldn't be able to lock onto unless you activated OBS right while it was open. Okay, let's see how this goes. Might finally get out of the first room. Like, don't get me wrong, it's pretty and all, but shit. Just wanted to do something else instead. Okay. Alright, that tearing in the middle is now gone. Chapel of Anticipation. Uh, appropriate. Classic. Necessary item ahead. Yes, death is a most critical and necessary item in any prop software. Does that come with a gesture or anything? Or you, no, you just scribble that on the ground, hey? Oh. 
gonna have to get used to that. That must be a one-way one -way door. I can drop down here. Oh, this bridge is... This is not a bridge. It is very, very broken. Okay, so opening and closing are both... First off, down. Try jumping off. Okay, so opening the message will close my... Or not close, will drop my guard. I think I heard something just now, but it's hard to be sure. I might have uh, preemptively turned that volume down too much. Ah, grass. <laughs> I hear something. It could just be the ropes of the bridge creaking in the wind. Oh, you can sprint while you're crouched, too. Interesting. The attacking stands you up. Does he crouch when he does that every time? Yeah, okay, yeah. I was about to say, it's like, until he releases that, does he stay hidden? Silent dealer, it's equivalent. So be wary of night. Uh -huh. Might be not here. Okay. Classic. Classic. Okay. Oh, you absolute champion. Well. 303. That's right, now that we can jump, I suppose things like that aren't as uh, impressive as they used to be. Since you're not using a running, jumping motion. Three. Oh ho! Whole new game when you can jump in a FromSoft. Ah, uh, battle, but likely death. <laughs> Bow ahead. Cry fingers. Shield. We'll cover your ass. Block my shield, which is nice.
guard break, so there are still guard break criticals. It's too hard. Endlessly blocking. That's a bummer. Not surprising, though. Ooh. Got chucked into the river, did I? Come to think of it, I never tested my equipment load and rolling speed. Might explain why my roll felt a little clunky there. is on his side. We found him here, after all. One of his kind is sure to seek the Elden Ring. Even if it does violate the Golden Order. Oh. Flask of Crimson Tears. Flask of Cerulean Tears. That'll be health and mana refilling, I believe. Yeah, so thanks to the fact that I have a catalyst available for equipping. I can uh if I'm fast, probably pull this out and use this to uh, upswing and knock the shield off that scion. Cave of Knowledge lies below. Oh, that's different. I wonder if there's some attack that you can jump over. There should be. There surely must be.
where can I find equip load? Oh, it even says on the right, medium load. All right, so what do we got for weights here? I am at 28 out of 48. That turns into light load. Oh, and it even updates it in real time while you're looking at things in the menu. Still uh, getting used to the buttons. The remove button is different depending on whether or not you're inside this menu. Alright, so I also just noticed that I have a listed stat of poise over there. Okay, so no matter what, I can only ever really get one piece of equipment on. Houndsman 1A. Don't know what that's about. back up at the end of the roll that wasn't really present in Dark Souls 3, so chain roll is probably going to be as critically effective as it was previously. Behold, tree. Yes. Stopgap up up there that would have saved me some of that damage. Rest day to site of grace will restore your HP, FP, and cleanse any status ailments. It will also refill your sacred flasks. However, most of the enemies you've defeated will be revived. You can find the sites of grace by going where light converges. These explanations are acquired in the form of info items and can be accessed from the inventory at any time. At any time. Oh, that doesn't actually sit me at it though. Past time. Sacred Tear is my upgrade item then. Eight charges. Yep. Interesting. Okay, so there's still only miracles and sorcery, but I don't know what arcane is yet. So if I look at my stats, and then... Wrong button. This one. Attribute governing discovery. Also affects holy defense, vitality, and certain sorceries and incantations. Fire resistance and immunity. Um, hello? I've got it trapped over on the right there. Oh, there we go. Certain sorceries and incantations. Okay. Attack power of dexterity armaments reduces casting time of spells. So that's back from Dark Souls 1. Softens falling damage. Ooh. And makes it harder to be locked off of your horse. It affects your physical defense. How heavy your equipment can be. Affects robustness. What? Affects focus. Is focus different from FP? 
we'll look for it. Oh no, yeah, there's a resistance on the right that says focus and vitality. Immunity, robustness, focus, and vitality. Oh, okay, those are status effects, I would bet. And they're governing resistance. Interesting. I guess. That's odd. I would have thought that was the timing there. Interesting. I'm not taking damage, at least, but I'm not getting the parry either. Alright, there. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm thinking this shield is a medium shield, so its parry is probably pretty terrible, but nevertheless... <laughs> it's like, oh god, I was asleep. I wasn't asleep. Alright, so in general, the approach I've uh, learned as a tip that I've applied to all of the from is to parry the hand, not the weapon that the hand is holding. Looks like I had to be a little early there on the attack that I would have otherwise expected. I am very vexed by his thrust attack being so hard to parry. And I didn't even get that one. Okay, so my timing is still terrible. It's gonna take a lot of work. Either that or a better shield for it. There it is, okay. Alright. Maybe holding your shield up, uh, that's the timing.
got two attacks that look very similar to each other. One's his light combo start, that one the other one. I thought that his friend was about to get involved in this fight, but he just kind of patrolled away, I guess. Partial. Far too. Oh, out of flask. Flask back. Oh, you can body people with your roll. Wanted to test that just then, I did. Too late. Far too early. Pretty consistently parry that attack now. Something I'm trying to test is how uh, the parry hitbox might be affected when he's using that thrust attack particularly. Which is why I'm backing up to see if like maybe the space is what determines... Well that was just terrible in my part. Because like, it seems like the parry timing is right about when his head, hand is level with the head. Which feels weird to me for some reason. Like by the time the weapon is past his head in front, it's too late for the hair. I seem to have lost the timing for this fallout carry now. Hmm. I probably don't have a very good shield for trying to do all this practice. But this very much seems like, especially since it has 100% physical block, uh, that this is probably a medium shield. <laughs> I knocked him completely over before. So I guess there's varying degrees of bodying people with rolls.
think having your shield up and then parrying from that might affect the timing by a fair bit. By a lot, actually. That one's just too late. Build it up to heavy attack again there. Nope, oh, thought that was a Couldn't even get the follow up. Even the doom with the light attack is important now that I've got the rest of them figured out. Huh. I had the follow up before. Now I don't. that one. the heavy. Gotcha. Come on, boy. Swing away again. Do it. Get me. Right, managed to get to that one, at least. I don't know. It's like, uh... Feels like I'm not getting consistent. Results. Can't tell if it's really. Dude, wake up! Thank you. You get your ass over here. We got practice to do. I am going to go back and fight that scion again. The fact that he can keep doing it makes me wonder if maybe when I'm too close to him it's messing with the hitbox, perhaps? Light rolling, I guess I've got a pair of hit more high frames than I did before. With that knowledge in hand.
How much does this weigh? 1.5? Damn, son, how heavy is this damn thing? 3.3? 2.8? 8.3? Well, it gives poise, so I suppose it is a metal armor of some kind. Let's see. Uh, what? Oh, okay, I was about to say, it's like, I don't remember there being an item here before, but I suppose I was busy with the, uh... graphical glitches, yeah. that this doesn't consume stamina. It's like it seems like primarily combat actions now consume stamina. Not even rolling. Maybe if you iframe something successfully with a roll it consumes stamina. choice on my part, since it wasn't going to affect my equip load enough to get me an extra piece of armor and damage protection, I might as well not have even bothered these equipping things. Oh, wait, hang on. Ooh. I don't know how I feel about that menu still being open in the middle of the screen when you're able to navigate the menu. Previously, multiple menus being open is something that from software games have allowed uh, players to dupe items with all the way back in demon souls where stockpile thomas and a sequence of basically queued up menus being opened allowed you to uh max out the storage of a single item that you deposited so instead of depositing one you deposited 99 or 999 or whatever the max was It's like my instinct is that uh, a menu display like that, even if it's just a simple text one that can't doesn't have any prompts in it, because the primary function uh, that allowed that to happen was that they had a yes. You opened a menu that had a yes or no prompt, and then you basically queued up that interaction of it. I'm not entirely sure if it'll let me open the door if I don't pick that up, so I'll just. Keep that up. If I... Okay, so I can't put that in my right hand. I'm pretty sure it won't let me block while I'm healing, but nevertheless, it feels better to not have my... Uh... Like, I, I st I'm letting off of sprint because I, I expect it to be draining my stamina. Do I have a running... Oh, combat! As stamina drain. Gotcha. Oh, that's a lot of my brain. Or I just rolled myself out of the way of the attack. He just fucking screened my HP bar down? Are you an ass? It's like, that's not... like like oh, Yeah, okay. If it has a stagger animation, absolutely. It's like he hits you with it, you're staggered, he punishes you. Fine. But it does damage. It's like, okay, sure. Yeah, I guess it's loud enough. That he, maybe he's rupturing my eardrums. Come on. <laughs> Note to self: shield up if he's screaming. I guess. <laughs> it's like just the the sheer amount of damage I'm doing to him. It's like this is 100% a, a possible to win fight. Uh, 
If I wasn't concerned about affecting my main character, I'd be turning off tutorial prompts so that when I open the main menu to adjust my equipment and stuff, it doesn't uh, keep opening the tutorials. But I'll just I'll just deal with the extra button presses being required. Okay, so it's brightly lit if it's the one you actively have in your hand. Gotcha. Opens only to those carrying a figure. Yeah, that's what I like, You are not allowed to not have the best. Sorry. I can jump! Ah, oh, there's so many things I'm going to be getting used to. It feels weird. So when you're not in combat, uh, stuff just doesn't drain stamina. Not even attack. But when you are in combat, it's starting to drain stamina. I feel like that's a little a little bit janky because then you can't really like just freehand pass uh, some things. I wasn't able to eye pass that at all. Stand the back. <laughs> that is a shit heal. I don't know that I even want to bother with that because it takes so much time. Like, yeah, I can move while I'm doing it, but it doesn't heal hardly enough to matter. Still, I suppose it could be the difference. I'll keep it in mind. Oh, maybe I'll apply my one and only buff. Maybe he's... Maybe the scion is blind. Maybe the scion is blind. Scion? 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 Wait, hold up. Do I jump higher because my equip layout is lower? Possible. Oh, there's an item up there. Obviously, I had already seen that one before, but there's one up there, too. Hmm. Either way, I have... I have practice to get back to. Feels like a cardinal sin to be skipping that cutscene so much already, but I'm gonna be playing it. I'm gonna be spending enough time doing this without adding any cutscene time to it. Depending on when I find the science second phase and how bad it is, if I feel like I can. Uh, reasonably expect myself to do it. Uh, on a consistent fight basis, I might recreate my main character to get whatever loot comes out of this fight. Alternatively, it could be a Sekiro situation, and it's like, this is a supposed to lose fight. We do insist this is a supposed to lose fight. <laughs> Now I'm trying to get clever and tricky with my rolls. It's like I, I figured that uh, some of his attacks, like because of the way he moves forward, I could roll through him to behind him and then get some attacks off while he's still busy in his combo. But he immediately had that attack follow up with an attack that flips around behind him. So I don't know right yet if that is just the way that combo naturally works or if he just uh, tracked me that well. 
or that's just an attack that he had really good tracking on. This could be a fight kind of like the um, the third lamb in Salt and Sanctuary, where it's more of a fight. It's more of a battle of attrition than anything else. Like you need to roll, 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 roll. Then you have an attack window. Then roll, 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 roll. Then you have an attack window. Especially in the second phase of the third lamb. Something I have just recently gotten very intimate with, familiar with because of or Sword, a weapon typically associated with being a uh, strength-based scaling uh, longsword uh, archetype. It's like two-handing, it could give you those a couple of extra points of damage, especially for the free opening attack that I get when I run up on him. Dangerous attack! Holy shit! Okay, so that's why it had such a big wind-up animation. I really could have stood to have realized that that's... It's like, the the bigger the wind-up animation, the more attention you need to pay to that attack. The more respect you need to give it. Maybe get some distance. Make sure you've got all your stamina back. Another interesting fact is that now that you can't two-hand just about anything, uh, can I put my shield in my right hand? It's like, have, has the turtle been rendered extinct? Ah, oh, goddammit. Raise your torch to see further in dark space, let's find them for the torch. Okay, so you have to equip a torch, it's not just an item you have access to, like a dark space too. I bet you when you hold it up, it greatly increases your uh, aggro radius to enemies around you. I'm just gonna throw that guess right out there off the top of my head. I don't think that was a mechanic. Like, in uh, Dark Souls 2, you just blocked with the torch because it was in your left hand. So I don't think that would have been a mechanic. But here, since they've gone to the trouble of incorporating a stealth system, I bet when you hold up the torch, in addition to granting you a greater sight radius, it probably also increases your aggro radius. Which you could then use to peel an enemy off with precision for the group. If you uh, masterfully know the exact range that it increases to. God, it feels bad to be skipping cutscenes. Every time I ever created a character in Dark Souls 1, I loved watching that cutscene. I don't remember if I commented on it previously when I watched the uh, cutscenes before, but... I am a little sad that they didn't use the same character that they've used for the last three games, because she has got the, just the voice of a legend for the epic narration. Oh, interesting. So I noticed before that I there had a bit of a a recovery animation from the fall when I jumped off that first ledge. This time I tried spamming uh, roll to see if I can't cancel that animation. It didn't work. Okay. I am not so bold and determined as to attempt to parry this man. Because the sheer size of his weapons make me... Like, despite the fact that he has several one-handed weapons that he's using, the sheer size of them makes me question whether or not I'd be able to parry them. Okay, so he finally stopped that attack. He has got mobility, he's got reach. Okay, but there is a range to that. Ooh, that's like baiting you out if you're trying to go for a shield break. Shield bash. But that destroys my stamina bar a lot. I am way too slow with this. Okay, don't want to be too close to him when he does something like that. I 
It feels weird that I don't just immediately drop to the ground. That, like, I get a, a little bit more motion and animation before the game is like, oh yeah, by the way, you're dead. Because we're going to move you to the next area. <coughs> so I, my, I hesitated there when I saw him rearing up for the, the rapid slamming attack because I was wondering if I couldn't... Ah, dang it, I keep doing that. I... There it both. Oh, scarabs, you say. Anyway, um... I wanted, like, I was... I, I saw it, and I recognized that it's just a little late what he was doing. So I hesitated when I, the idea occurred to me that maybe that attack aggressively goes straight forward towards you, that maybe it doesn't have good tracking and I could just aggressively uh, roll into and through it, and then uh, get an opportunity to attack him from behind while he's busy doing that. Sin, 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 skipping sin. So it is, like, there is enough space in the arena that one can reasonably get this heal off, I suppose. Oh, I did say that I was going to try my one and only buff. What all did it describe this as again? This is fall damage and sound. Okay. This is indeed the assassin's approach. I wanted to try rolling that, but I A, I rolled to the side, which is a terrible idea, and B, I tried spam rolling, and he still caught me in between middle, in the middle of my rolls, so Dark Souls 3's chain roll of Thawne is now officially gone. That's probably going to be a mixed bag, because there's a lot of weapons that were like just uh, so aggressively fast that that was really your only way to react to it, was to just keep rolling, because your roll cost less stamina than their attack did. So eventually you would win out and have the opportunity to punish them spamming all of their stamina bar out. Just like, particularly with the almighty straight sword in Dark Souls 3. Most of this knowledge I have almost exclusively from watching Chase the Pro. It's like, I never got very far into Dark Souls 3's PvP because I didn't get through... I don't think... Did I ever complete Dark Souls 3? Fuck, son. Like, Elden Ring is out, and I just now realized I don't think I ever actually completed Dark Souls 3. I got so into watching Chase the Bro that I just... Brain just as I assumed vicarious completion, I guess. Well, shit, I feel like a dumbass now. Saw so much of it through videos on YouTube that I my brain tricked itself into thinking it had already completed. I don't think I have. It's like I can't remember builds or techniques or strategies that aren't chase the bro stuff and uh, speed runs and challenge runs and all that fun nonsense watching the backlogs firebomb everything 
So, uh, Assassin's Approach clearly didn't do anything at all. Unless I aggressively reposition roll that, then uh, getting out of the way is the only solution to that. Because if the hits start connecting, it eats through stamina too much because it's considered it having a shield bash as part of it since he's using the shield. It's possible that the individual hits track differently for blocking a regular weapon hit, blocking a, a shield bash for extra stamina damage. But, uh,. At the moment, I don't have the skill level to tactically realize, oh, it's like I don't recognize the attack early enough to position and roll aggressively to try and get behind it for it. I'm just going to commit to the idea of just backing off and rolling away. Which I'm sure, depending on where our position in the arena, is going to result in me rolling away off the edge of the arena at some point. Oh, and now the idea has just occurred to me that I should, at some point, while I'm using test characters here in the beginning, uh, run straight past the boss and just jump off the cliff and see if that gets me anything different in an animation or cutscene. Oh, also I was going to test. <laughs> the parry is still the L2 trigger, because it's considered the skill of the weapon. Shield Bash! And whack. But you can't block with it anymore, because you can't two-hand it. So they still let you put the shield in that hand, but now that you can't two-hand it to dedicate all of your uh, inputs to shield inputs, <clears throat> I wonder if there, like, surely there will be something like the giant store, so that you know the turtle isn't totally extinct, but you can't just become turtle at any point in the game now. So the single light hit is 50. That one does 86 for about the same. Time. Oh! I think when I rolled into him just then, it actually bodied him out of his attack animation. It seemed like he canceled him about halfway in. So I guess uh, I gotta be careful with that, maybe. Okay, so you can't aggressively roll into that. And I did, in fact, cause him to break an animation with. So that's, yeah, the longer the animation takes, the more dangerous the attack, but uh, that was entirely a fluke that I was in the right position to not get hit by the first part, and that I was recovering from a roll. If I had just, like, stood, like, obviously I wouldn't have known this yet, but if I had just stood still because I was safely positioned, and then timed it out and rolled it, it looked like that attack ended pretty much as soon as I got hit by the last swing of it, so I could have rolled that last swing instead. So I was off to his left, I believe, circling around towards... Dang it, I continued. Uh, I was off to his left, circling around behind him. So if I see him going for that, A, I'm going to actually have my shield out. I don't know why I decided to commit to the shield list. I wanted to just be much more quickly uh, ready to guard break swing. What if I saw him holding up his shield again? It's entirely possible that I can't guard break the uh, shield with just the guard break. 
animation on my uh, stance. Because it, it visually, it looks like it's a tower shield. Regardless of the fact that it's in the hands of a boss. And bosses have their own rule set. For how the mechanics work more often than not. Typically, they tend to play by the same rules that we do. But they will have their own unique modifications. Generally having to do with them being like three times our size. Or three times our limb count. Might just have, you know, the smallest of differences to be made upon uh, considering whether or not they should play the same as we do. You know, just out of hand, the very first thing that I'm sad about without with the lack of two-handing <coughs> is that uh, I love the way that the two-handing animation looked in Demon Souls, and I'd always hoped that it would come back at some point. Now it's really ah, I don't know why I put my shield down there. He does not like you being behind him. He uses that animation to get you out from behind him. You might also use that animation if you're behind him. Like that, I'm starting to get used to that. Although I'm sure it's going to result in me just standing still and taking my last lump when I otherwise would have been able to continue the fight at some point. getting lazier. <laughs> <coughs> Where is my drink? I went for an attack because I forgot about the last step of that, but I did successfully roll all of those attacks by just aggressively rolling into him. Because his attacks move him forward as he makes them, and in addition to the iframes of the roll and then repositioning more forward, uh, you kind of push yourself underneath the boss's box, I bet, which creates a bit of a safe space for you. If I hadn't committed to the attack too early, I actually would have successfully used significantly less stamina than what blocking would have taken, therefore leaving me more stamina to counterattack with. As opposed to having to space out for him and then spend the stamina to sprint up to him so that you can hit him again. <clears throat> Ooh. 
I love that From Software makes bosses that are made to kill you on the first hit, but if you really know what they're doing, like, you can absolutely just two-hand a club with no armor and shield and just go, go, go be their stolen. I want to see how much stamina that takes and how much damage it does. <clears throat> well, that's actually quite a bit of damage, but it also takes a lot of stamina. My rolling attack is garbage, by the way. Oh, I don't have, uh, access to that. That uh, stab animation that he does, that quick jab, <clears throat> into silence is like a like singleized. Uh, it doesn't have any follow up, basically. So I have to much more defensively react to it because he's not gonna. That's not the right button. Basically, he's gonna do something completely different after he stabs. He has a very high recovery speed. I got baited. I got so baited. It's like. Hold shield up. Walks up. Tries to take the shield off. Gets killed. It's like, that is not a fast... Like, God. Now I respect Chase's madman skills of just toggling and swapping everything on his body in mid-combat so much more. It looks effortless, but it takes practice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's like, I'm just trying to move my shield off so that I can use my skill. It's like my weapon art from previous Dark Souls 3, but damn, but if it is it a lot more complicated than it looks. Spirit Spring Jumping. Well, I didn't get time to read that, but good to know that something called that exists, I suppose. I am very happy with how aggressively quickly I'm learning the science moveset, though. Cyan, Skyan, Skin? I don't know. I feel like my friend had corrected me on my pronunciation of that in the previous in the past, but now I don't remember which was the correction and which was the original pronunciation I was using from having just read it. <clears throat> I think the correct pronunciation might be Skin, but Cyan just sounds smoother to say.
They do be having that reach. Counter damage? Why did I do 68 instead of 50 there? Oh, does his head take extra damage? A pokey weapon might be nice here. Fucked up the roll on that. Owie! Damn. Getting faster at navigating that menu. My medium roll is much shorter in distance than it covers. So I wouldn't be getting away with as much as I am if I wasn't uh, taking that armor off. Jump itself doesn't take much damage, but, but the, uh, ah, uh, you ain't baiting me out that time. And you've got the reach. Poor handling on my part all the way from the top to the bottom of that fight. I am proud that I didn't get baited by him falling up the shield for all of one second and then immediately dropping it again. We take those small victories, yes we do. Even though they're followed by a big loss right after. I'm tempted to pull out a different starting class just to uh, experiment with the weapons and options a bit more, especially if there is a skill-based shield that doesn't have a parry on it. That would be so much better for my uh, my scrub lord level of skills right now because duh, pulling off the shield to go for the left trigger. It's like the left trigger especially is just something I've never used too much for anything other than parrying. series of flukes. My my uh, my roll hit him 
and canceled the animation so he recovered from it faster. Ow! Honestly, would have wished I had hit that on my shield instead. Yeah, so that stab is actually pretty dangerous because it's basically a way for him to take free st uh, stamina chip off of you. Uh, before he starts a combo that you otherwise might have had enough stamina to block. Ow. Yeah, if I don't hit him with my roll, I've got enough uh, time to fully charge a heavy, but if I do, then I can only really get a light attack off. Back. I am dead. Counter damage. So I gotta, I gotta get that out, that instinct out of my system to roll backwards. Cause like my first thought is always, uh, is he screaming? Cause uh, that attack cannot be blocked. Like I might survive it if I'm at full HP, but I can't block it. If I can get behind it though, it looks like it's a good opportunity to uh, hit him because it doesn't seem to have much of a hitbox behind and to the side of him. It's got a little bit to the side. I'm sure I'll get clipped by that a couple of times while I'm doing this. <clears throat> but it seems like it doesn't reach behind him at all. You with your fancy ass shield there. Where have you come from, son? Good to know we'll be able to get back to this area. That's actually a different. That's different from his two swiping attacks. It reminds me of the dancer. But it does take a shitload of stamina. See that right there? I hit him with my roll and it canceled his animation. I'd already committed to the strong attack though, so got clipped. Okay, yeah, definitely. Blindly rolling around, trying to get behind him. <coughs> so, that uh, one attack where he starts rapid thrusting in front of him actually had roughly the same animation as the one that he used when he spins. So it could be that he goes for that animation and then decides what to use. Like he, Basically like he's using a sword stance like I am. Uh, it may be that he decides what to use on that based on where you're standing. So it said I was far away from him, he went for the rapid thrust, but if you're standing beside him, it could be that he'll use the spinny. Otherwise, like, if I was playing this much more passively than I currently am, I feel like I could be done with it already, but I'm liking learning his movesets and aggressively figuring out iframe rolling. Because this is definitely a boss where if you just stay at range, and then wait for an attack that's easy to punish, you could quickly and easily chip him down, at least into the second phase. And I probably should be doing that for the consistency's sake of just getting to second phase so that I can practice it. So I don't have to just fly by the seat of my pants once I finally get a successful run going and then have to start all over again. Still trying to find some to uh, interact with things. 
Excuse me. I'm trying to think if I might like this one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. What I'd really like to do uh, is run up to him and then. Probably not enough time for a fully charged heavy, but I would like to try and get like a, a bit of charged heavy on his end. He's not sure if that input will go. I'm not gonna get a full in. Gonna have to be a bit better with my spacing and reaction to it after I do that, though. Nope, yeah, I'm dead. It's like didn't realize fast enough that that's what he was doing. To drop my shield and start rolling so he clipped my shield and that's basically game over because there's a bit of a recovery animation after your shield gets hit by an enemy that doesn't just bounce right off of it possibly still when they bounce too I'm not sure That's his, uh, you're behind me animation. <clears throat> Honestly, though, since it has such a wind-up to it before he actually executes the swing, because I have rolled for the animation instead of for the actual attack. And if I didn't do that, that feels like it's an easy attack to just roll through, because it's, it's only got one swing to it. I might be able to, uh, get behind him and uh, get him to use that attack. I'm sure there's more than one thing you can do when you're behind him, uh, but I might be able to get behind him, get that attack to come out, and use it as a free hit. A little bit faster if I don't jump. <clears throat> Should try just running next time instead of rolling. So last time I ended up with a running strong attack instead of getting the chance to charge a strong attack. So bad. I 
I wonder if there's a rolling strong attack. I'm gonna have to try it. Just because the rolling light attack is garbage. Now it's just a straight rolling strong attack. Which isn't bad in itself, right? Because all of my stamina. Holy shit. Way too early for that attack. If I had gotten hit by it, I wouldn't have had been any reason to complain. Just barely got my shield back up to like that. Yeah, see, that is the you're behind me attack. And it is, it looks super easy to dodge, if you're not rolling too early on it. That's a follow-up. Now he's in a stand. That's Bradley's us. And he had absolutely breaks my guard. I gotta roll around that. So the Scion has, Scion, Skion, Scion, I don't give a fuck. It's like, the boss also has a sword stance, much like I do. Come to think of it, that sword stance's guard break attack did a shitload of fucking damage to him. Damn it. Uh, I should really look into... Uh, using the thrust on him, because I bet the thrust does even more damage. If I don't end up using all of my FP for my healing to get into a later stage of the fight, then I could probably burn down the last stage of the fight by just finding windows to stance stab him. Because I bet it does good damage. Based on just how much damage the simple guard break swing did. Yeah. Really though, I really wished I had some thrusts with this weapon, but it, it's the broadsword. It's not surprising that it's all horizontal. It's its specialty. Its rolling attack is just garbage though. It's so short range. Yeah, I can I can roll and then go for a strong attack. There's just an awkward timing to it. Off the wall. I didn't want to do that. I have negative stamina now. Yeah, you can space that attack out, so I got to punch. <clears throat> Definitely has some attacks that are designed to punish panic rolling. It's like you see him doing something and you don't know what it is, so you just roll. The attack is designed to catch it. Hmm. 
much like how most enemies have an attack that they use pretty much exclusively when they see you using something. Healing, consumable item, so on and so forth. Bloodborne especially was uh, notoriously <laughs> notorious for this in my playthrough with low HP because I I very forcibly got to find out <laughs> every single enemy's uh, oh you're healing? This is what I'm going to do attack. Most of them were lunges and charges. Sometimes it was a projectile. Cardinal sin of skipping. When you haven't seen the cutscene to Ad nauseum yet. Every time he puts that up, I just want to bash it. want to bash it so hard. Just barely got my good luck inside the action. I wasn't sure about rolling it. It's nice that he is so passive so often that I can actually get that slow ass on so off. Goddamn. So tempted to just get rid of the shield and start aggressively rolling because it takes so much less stamina. Right, I think I'm ready to. Did I just continue? I continued, didn't I? God damn it. Now, what I was saying is that I'm ready to try a different set of weaponry, because uh, the broadsword's not doing it for me. Broadsword's good at fighting multiple and new, I don't want to continue, I want to delete. Broadsword's good at fighting multiple enemies, it's not, not enemies with, it's not good for spacing, basically. Now that looks like your bog standard longsword, which means it's probably got my jabbing that I want. I think this one's just two scimitars. Battle axe, dagger. That would got to be terrible, because damn, that's got to be a close-ranked MacGuffinry. Uh, parrying shield, though, I, I suppose I could just... Fine. Look, this is science. It's testing. I'm going to try and parry the boss. This this can't possibly end poorly. Can't possibly end poorly. Tis now the times of science, so why not? I'm absolutely savaging the options button on my PlayStation controller. Still at medium loading with this champion. Really? You have a bow, you say? Buckler parry. Oh, it even says that it's a special parry. You can spam it. You can spam it really well. It has a high speed recovery. Barrage. Interesting. So, when you have a bow in the offhand, it will automatically pull it out for... Ah, so you can spam arrows really quickly like this. Probably used against the target that you're locked onto, I would bet. If I take that off and put it over here... Crate knife? Excuse me? Oh, damn, that is a chonky boy, isn't it? Looks like something Australian would have. Well, that is nearly as fast as I was expecting. It also has a combo of swords to itself.
Good old quick step. Okay, so right trigger when you've got a bow out must switch your arrows. Since I only have one arrow equipped currently, that animation is dead. How much does that bow weigh? 1.5? Oh, 2.5. Damn, the short bow is pretty goddamn heavy in this game. 3, 7, 1, 4. That's nice. Uh. This is going to go interesting, I'm sure. <laughs> I can't parry that. Oh, fuck yeah! I bet you you can get guard break that, but it's a tower skill, so it's not easy. Fucking buckler parries a goddamn monster. Trying to kick there. <laughs> that button no longer. That button input no longer exists. Okay, that last attack, while strong, has a very short range. Fuck the parry up. I don't have heals anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have heals anymore. So. The puck was uh, good for the parry, bad for the blocking. Very easy for him to chip me down. All right, so that's probably my like, just due to my play style, that's probably my closest ticket to just getting it through with a consistent way. If I want to uh, create a character to start my first run off with a uh, scion or scion skion whatever a first boss kill uh, that's probably my ticket is the bandit and the parrying but uh, I do want to you won't have a shield so I guess I am going to go for the long sword it's like I do want to experience the full set of boss moveset I don't know if he starts using that stance when he gets to about two-thirds health that could mean that he has three phases instead of just two. Because after two parries, he immediately pulled out that stance attack. And I normally don't see that until much longer into the fight. Probably because it takes me longer to deal damage when I'm just whacking him. So it looks like you get a fifth hit is a strong one. There's my stabs. Follows up by a swipe. It's a little slower than it used to be. Heavy load today. Heavy load today. Heater shield. Still a parry. Chonky boy arms. Now I'm not heavy anymore. The range on that roll is just so short, son. Still medium. Still medium. I've got a fucking halberd on. Excuse me. First of all, let's put some pants back. On. Okay, so right out of hand, I noticed that it doesn't seem to have that animation. Uh, in previous Souls games, uh, you had weapons that were considered. I don't know how to. It's not the direct damage systems. They often involved and used the direct damage system. But they, you could, I think, have weapons that would... Uh... Basically, in the previous games, if you saw somebody like, swing a halberd like this, you might have noticed that the character kind of jiggled at the end of it. 
like they lost their balance a little bit. And what that was is if you whiffed an attack with a weapon like the halberd or I think the battle axe, then there would be a, an animation that would cause you to kind of stagger for about a quarter of a second. But if you hit the target, there was no stagger, so you could attack repeatedly with no problem. Like, in general, the rule of thumb is two heavies is your, your heavy attack comboing. Now, this definitely seems like a weapon that should be two handed. It doesn't look like there's any different animations at the end of it. I also can't figure out how to two-hand it. that. Okay, so Kit can actually be a skill now. Looks like it's a dual wielder's trick. But it's not possible with that. light level there's basically no way there's no way that you get you get a meet a light well uh, wearing any <laughs> any set amount of night equipment I already spent all my FP and uh, so on and so forth, so I'm not really committed to this attempt. Halberd, though. How the hell do you two-hand a weapon? Like, is they are they is it seriously just based on the weapon? A weapon is either is one-handed or is two-handed. It's like you can't two-hand the halberd anymore. Are are we are we being serious about that? Am I just missing an input somewhere? Because, like, I'm reading all the buttons at the bottom of the screen, and I don't see anything that says equip as two-handed. I wish I could come up with an idea to get that kick animation in because even if it doesn't break it his guard the first time I kick his shield <laughs> <laughs> 
I bet you the second or third time, if he's still blocking it, will. Yeah, that's going to have the usual guard break and uh, thrust, I would presume. Slash upwards through enemy's guard. Maybe it's just a shield penetration attack now instead of a, a guard breaker? Ah, yes. One demands that I have fingers before I move. Eight pound helmet. Light, 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 light. I might not be able to heal with this character, but I can, thanks to the durability of my pants, I'm sure. I'll be able to take more hits in addition to my larger HP pool. Uh, I don't remember what the stagger resistance, guard boost, 8 to 38. I don't remember what the heater shield I had before was like. Ah, early roll. Attack too soon, that's fine. It's like just ham-handing it right now. Trying to get used to the new thrusting animations. Some attacks may break an enemy's stance, give you a chance to perform critical, charge attacks, and jump attacks make it particularly easy. Okay. So if I see him... Okay, so maybe I don't need to go through pulling my shield off and using the upswing. That might just be an attack. It could be also be good at guard breaking, but it might just be designed to penetrate damage through their shield now. Whereas if I just charged up a heavy attack with my broadsword on my first character choice, that might also just get the shield out of the way. Way too early. That was definitely not the attack I thought he was going to use. Come to think of it, I don't think I've seen that particular attack very often. Just like just a forward sliding right swing. Of course, it's also probably part of some combo that I would recognize that I'm more used to seeing when I'm up close and personal inside of his face. Drop my controller again. Oh, odd stuff. 
dagger. Probably had to do with me dropping my controller. The connection for my controller to the computer is actually quite tenuous. Like, it's old. It's falling apart. But, uh, it's prone to causing my game to crash when I'm playing it on this guy because I have to use a DS4 converter. And that might have been what that stagger was, just since it's n it's not using the converter. Like, the game just detects and reads the controller as a Xbox instead. But, uh, I appreciate that because I think that's what prevents the game from crashing. But I haven't had a stagger like that before, so I'm going to attribute it to that. I've come to love this attack so much because it's such a free damage. I think the boss is actually resistant to thrust damage. Very resistant to thrust damage. It's a bummer. I just rolled right underneath. Like, I knew I could do it. Owie. Okay, so hilariously, the fact that the broadsword doesn't thrust, despite eating up its capacity to attack at range, does in fact give it a better damage potential against this boss because it looks like he's severely resistant to thrust damage. This is gonna have to hold on for a second because the cat needs her insulin shot and gets fed at the same time. There's another one of them fucking spam bots. Like, why does my recordings attract all of the fucking spam bots? Fuck off. There we go. Okay. Uh, I'll be right back.
Alright, and I'm back. Time for some more runs. Okay, so now that I know that that, uh, is terrible at this. This thing might actually be uh, an ideal damage type. Also, it's probably going to have a strong attack that's very good for me to test if I see him blocking in front of me, just running up and charging a fully stri uh, hitting him with a fully charged heavy attack. Focus on the poise for now. Poise of two. Two point one for a poise of one. Yeah, I can get away with the head, and that's better. Large leather shield. Still has a parry. I was honestly hoping for a uh wait, do I not have pants on? Okay. <laughs> Just choose. No pants here. No pants here. We don't have pants here on the ship, anyways. Yeah, the fifth attack is always a, a combo finisher. So. An overswing and a heavy, and then a. Like, this definitely seems like a break of guard, if that is how I'm understanding it correctly. Wild strikes, you said. Okay, so as long as you hold it down, you'll be using it. That was a light attack. That was a heavy attack. Interesting. Interesting. They have taken so many fascinating approaches to changing up the way that things run. Actually, come to think of it. 0.7, 3.9. it's kind of heavy. So I have a total points of 5 for 3.9 and... Five and six. Okay. All right. Don't need gloves. Don't need shoes. Got ourselves a kilt. Maybe even a just skirt. Hat. That's all we need. See if I can get some guard breaking in. Ah, holy crap. less than my shield. Oh, and my shield doesn't have full block. Getting him the block is going to be the problem, <laughs> so, honestly. So I probably could have anticipated that this shield would take chip damage. Just from the fact that it looks to be made out of either wood or leather or leather coated wood. I don't need to delete the character every time. I could just stack a pile of T's, but uh, I prefer it. It's cleaner. This character also comes with a fairly good pile of HP.
heavy. Okay, so it doesn't give you any additional commentary on the normal or charge attack that uh, comes out of that. Look at that man with his big ass club. Wish I had that. There was no point in blocking anymore. My HP was low enough that if I had gotten chipped on this shield at all, it would have killed me anyway, so I might as well just commit to a, a, a no-hit playstyle there. You saw how well that lasted. It's alright, so I'm going to persist with the bandit until I can at least get an attempt to try a heavy attack on the shield. But that won't really inform me on whether or not I can do it with the broadsword once I try my original choice of class again. But it will at least help me learn the mechanics and how they work better. So maybe I should stay a lot farther away from the okay, boss and see if I can't fade out that shielding. Since several classes start with uh, projectiles, I'm going to guess that... He might pull out that shield as a reaction to you being at a distance, as if he's anticipating you attempting to make a ranged attack, regardless of whether or not you have that ranged attack. So when I hold down Y... So those must make for... Oh, no. This is not the way that this character is cross -loaded. Okay, so those five slots at the top appear to be something I can get access to by holding Y and then pressing up, down, left, right. Or... Oh, no, here it is. This is Pouch. These have quick directional inputs. Aren't going there for some reason. Maybe you just can't put the memory of grace in those slots. That's my load now, right? right away. Okay, so that's not something that exclusively happens. feel bad.
Okay, so I hit him with the fully charged heavy attack, and it definitely hit the shield. He took some penetration damage from it, I think. I wasn't paying too close attention because I wasn't expecting numbers to come up. Um, but his guard did not break. The fact that he has a tower shield means that even if I am successfully using the correct guard break procedures, he might just be, like, my damage is probably just too low to actually get through it. So I would need an enemy with a much more conventional shield set up to really figure out the guard breaking capacity. Because, like, even in uh, Dark Souls 3, there was a horse ring that you could equip to supercharge your kicks for breaking guards. Which would make all of the difference when you were dealing with, uh... What weapons do you bring to the... Okay, so you do have a shield, you just don't show it. Try out that katana and see if slash damage has any significant difference to, uh, this boss's resistances, but, uh... The fact that the boss has such a significantly noticeable guarding animation vexes me because I feel like that's a, that's a that's the boss begging you to do something if you know what you can do. I just might not have the equipment for it. Mighty shot. Oh, it's because of the bow. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a stance. And then a penetrative long shot or a shield piercing shot perhaps. I'm going to guess before I read it. Archery skill performed with an oblique stance. Ready the bow, then pull the bowstring to its limit to enhance the power of the shot, penetrating the enemy's guard. Yep. Though it isn't much, it boosts fire damage negation. On a wood shield. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it's not a buckler parry, but it's much faster to recover and to deploy than the buck than the, the heater shield ones. Okay, so that was the fifth swing. Thrust. Slight. Fast thrust. Heavy charge. Slight. Dark Souls 3 style? Well, the normal is strong to form a switch slash. Okay. There's one of those a parry. No. No, that's just two different types. You can no longer parry with your katana. Okay, so how shit is this shit? 58 physical block and it's toted slight improvement to fire is still only 40 <laughs> Why do I even have this shield? Like, fuck that. This is a shieldless play now Somebody tell me how I two had my shit How do I put it away so I can swing my weapon again without having to take the weapon off? didn't take enough equipment off to get to light rolling, so that was a terrible idea. In, like, in observation of that, 
I'm very proud of that time that I did roll that attack correctly. B, I am definitely not at the point where I can go for a no shield run on this. Definitely not. Definitely not. Anyway. Now that I have deduced that my thrusting attacks, despite giving me better reach, uh, appear to do terrible damage to this boss, I am going to be much more confident in going for other playstyles with my broadsword for consistent runs. Let's see. I'm not going to throw magic at him. I'm not willing to commit to that. This might be the one and only class that looks like... Oh, no, it's an S-Doc. I was about to say that looks like a Zweihander, but... That, 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 that. that is an S-Doc. But sure, let's... Let's hard confirm that the boss is resistant to thrust damage, shall we? Obviously, I haven't looked at the base damage numbers of any of these weapons, so... It could just be that one weapon does more base damage than the other. But even just on the difference between swinging the longsword and stabbing with it, I think he's resistant to thrusts. Because the thrust attacks are strong attacks. They should do more damage on base, you would think. Magic glint blade? We're not starting off with a projectile. We're starting off with a melee spell? Okay. Medium low because the hat is heavy. What the fuck? Yeah, but I have no poison otherwise. Oh, no. Take it off. Three. Small metal round shield. Antiquated charm. It glares back at the enemy. It boosts focus. Okay. And it's parry shield. It's not a buckwear parry shield, but it is... Oh, look at that. Are we looking at, like, a salt and sanctuary style? The more you use spells... I don't know if that's a uh, kite shield parry or a small shield parry. Good old fashioned stab behind the shield. And S Tox has got a slash instead of just all thrust. Ah, but that is not a slash. That is a strong attack running attack. It's just a very strong... There is no rolling to find that. One spell, quit blade. Okay, that isn't any kind of stance, it's just get through the shield stab, I got Build power, then lunge forward for a strong thrust to pierce the enemy. Yep. Okay. That is not at all what I was expecting. I thought I would, like, swing the staff with a magic sword. It's like calling an artillery support. I believe I was stuck on a bit of the environment there. Alright, that did 107 damage, but it also... It's a really easy to miss with, I'm thinking. Okay, like from the menu, just looking at the portrait of the character, I thought maybe he was swinging his Y-hander. Don't know why I thought that, because very obviously the gentleman says that it's a spelled boy. I am looking forward to playing around with the magics in this game. I'm glad that the starter class I chose was Confessor. Miracles seem like they might be a bit less interesting, but nevertheless, it at least let me dabble in it while I'm playing for regular. Alright, 
but I do believe that my best option for consistently getting to a second phase, which I'm not even sure that the boss has yet, I presume he surely must have one. I think my best bet's going to be with this boy. actually pretty heavy, fuck that. Really? I was hoping I could hang on to the poise, at least. Yeah, these are super lightweight. My equipment load must be... Yeah, I only have base 10 endurance. My equipment load is just that shit. Between the two of them, since I basically have to take that off. Unless. Alright, so between these two, 1.74, that about. Damage resistance. Four for basically four. 0.7 for 1.5, three for just about three. 7.7 7 for about 8. So I definitely do want the mat, the body tools if I can get it. It seems to be uh, slightly more efficient. I can't have both, so I might as well have this one instead. And then yes, if I pull out the bow in the middle of the fight, I will start medium rolling. <laughs> that there's uh, only a rolling light attack and no rolling heavy attack even though there's a running heavy attack oh does the backstab not immediately use interesting if you backstep you can't get the running heavy attack but you can get your running light attack or not okay I guess the backstep just has its own unique light attack animation. Previously, the back attack was fast access to uh, your running attacks. I hate that. Like, I feel like I should be able to do something with that. Like, that attack comes out way too fast for it to be something I should really be fishing to parry. Plus, my HP pool is so low that it's like, just the act of practicing to fish for parries on this boss is actually going to be a bit of a knockoff. Because every failure is basically one of my only two failures that I can have before I just drop dead. But if I can get maybe three-ish, it's it's a little different, difficult to tell because I'm also going to be going to try and like scratch him with the dagger at the same time. But uh, it looks like if I get three, maybe just two, uh, parries in, I should immediately have him down to half HP, which I assume is when he kicks it up a notch and goes to his phase two. I presume the boss has a phase two, maybe even a phase three. God, I want to watch that cutscene so much. Okay. Take off. This, this, this. Light load. Still trying to open with all of the other. So 
so the weapon does say that it has slash and hand pierce, so I'm betting my jabbing attacks with the heavies are probably going to be less effective. Plus, I mean, this is a dagger. You should be spamming the R1. like that. It's odd. I felt like I was doing better earlier. Maybe I'm being far too aggressive now. Before, I was probably just much more aggressively waiting for any, like, just the one attack. that, Like, he has the, this one combo he'll start, and then he'll go for a transition attack from the left to his right. That is an attack that I recognize, oh, I can parry that. And then I'll step into the combo to do that. But I also want to aggressively attempt to learn what other attacks of his I can parry, because I bet you that if he does have a second phase, it's going to be much more aggressive, because that's just how that works. But the attack may not come often enough for me to reliably go for that to finish him off with parrying. I need to have at least a few attacks of his that I can parry, otherwise I might just be up the creek without a paddle once phase two starts. Please tell me the arrows don't have weight. Okay. Yeah, even if I just swap to the bow. So if I want to go for the bow, it's going to take my defenses away. I won't be able to light roll anymore. Plus, I didn't, that's piercing damage from the arrows, for sure. So uh, if I do get him down to a range where I can finish him off with those, it's unlikely to get me very far unless he's got like a sliver of health. There was a bit of a white flash when I hit him there, like I was like glancing off of his weapon or something. Oh, I fucked it up. I don't know if I could parry that. Or not. I would like to try. But that's the attack I normally like to carry, but I was in a position. Before I was pretty safe to the left. That time, like most, like the, with the spin attack, it's really important to figure out when he starts tracking on it, because he tilts to a certain direction when he uses it. And if you get to the other side of wherever side he's tilting to, like his weapons are high up in the air, you can just stand there. Probably don't even have to block and not get hit. Of course, he's also going to continue trying to track while he's spinning. But if you can. From the start of the attack, when it would try, oh, damn, I continue to set to lead. Um, from the start of when he begins, if you can distinguish when the tracking happens on that attack, I can bet that it's a lot easier to just avoid it for minimum stamina costs. Because I bet he can't turn on a dime while he's spinning. He might turn on a dime when he starts to spin, but after that, he probably has to slowly rotate in your direction which means it'll be very easy to be safe. Because, hell, I fluked it the first time I ever saw that animation. So, should it, like, there's... I have... I have sound reason to believe these things.
but yeah, that definitely is, he has the one stance, and then whether you're in front of him or you're trying to spin around him, he decides whether he's going to spin or stab. Honestly, though, the spin doesn't last very long, so if you can get good at rolling or positioning it, it feels like a, a great opportunity for uh, damage, oddly enough. Oh, what's this message say? Ah. Indeed. I don't think any attack that he uses more than one weapon at a time could be parried. Now I do believe that that jab, that quick light jab that he does, basically off the off the cuff, that doesn't immediately lead into any combo. He just kind of does it, and then he'll do something else instead. Uh, I, I swear that must have a parry on it, but I bet you you basically have to predict parry it. It's like if you're just trying to reactively do so, you probably can't hit it. Buckler parry is probably the only way you could reactively parry it. I would guess. Just because the attack's so damn fast. One thing I definitely need to get back on top of is rolling. It's like I need to get my rolling my rolling practice back up to puff. Back up to puff? Back up to snuff. Because I have neglected it severely in favor of just experimenting with the weapons so far. I think my... Does this thief have better HP pool than my damn professor? I think he might. Might be parryable, but I definitely fucked it up. Now I'm just chipped to death. Okay. I think I'm going to go pull out a shield, because, like, the parrying is awesome. But, uh, I am obviously not getting good fast enough for this, for my taste. Oh yeah, small shields are definitely faster, with better recovery speed. Okay, I think I might have the same HP pool as a thief does. Which I will accept. The thief did, definitely should not have more than me. Although then again, this character probably has levels in, yeah, mine boosting the FP pool, so those could be where the HP boys go to. 
In which case, I, I, can, I can understand that. I don't know, like, my brain farted for a minute there. I had absolutely no idea that was the attack he was using. And there is no excuse for that. It's a very easy attack to read. I think this is something I tend to do a lot. It's like I start practicing something for so long that I get too comfortable with it, and I stop like really focusedly paying attention to what they're doing. Like I'm paying too much attention to what I'm doing. I think that's the transition that generally happens through the halfway point from when I'm doing pretty decently at the start by playing defensive, passive, paying attention, to playing it much more aggressively, confident in the things that I practice. I like that the only way you can close that box is uh, with the start button. It's a little awkward. What? Yeah, I'll get it a couple more attempts in and I'll come help. What? I'm recording at the moment. Ah, oh, shit. Like, I wanted to see that maybe if he was dumb enough to hold the shield up after I fully charged heavy, if I could go for a second fully charged heavy, and that would guard break him. Also, I should keep in mind that my shield, while infinitely inferior at it, can still parry. So if I see that one attack in his combo that's really easy to parry, I might make an aggressive attempt at it. such a habit to let off of the sprint. Yep, I'm gonna die. 
If I you get caught by any part of the attack, you're just dead. <laughs> it's a bummer. Come to think of it, really, I don't have any good reason to be up on top of him. I mean, there's several attacks that I can aggressively roll forward to and get an opportunity to attack. So, like, if I wanted to kill him fast and aggressively, yeah, that is the trick. But I am far too inconsistent at reading his attacks for me to be playing like that. So let me try and, like, force myself to, to back up a bit, be a bit more defensive. It's like, I got a shield. I might as well use it. Plus, when I'm farther away, it's a lot easier to read his full body motions to understand what attack is coming. That man is two-handing his club. I might have to try a wretched. back up anywhere near far enough for that heal. And I knew it. The strong stab attack from the stance is fantastic damage. Plus, if the mechanic still exists for thrust uh, being really good for counter damage, uh, I'm probably getting a bonus when I do that while he's in the middle of something. Counter is critical is different from critical although from the similarity of the words you wouldn't guess it right out of hand I'm going to bet yeah you don't even have a shield which is probably why you get the benefit of two-handing your toy Why am I not doing this? I just saw somebody two-handing it, but I'm pretty sure Maybe it was a different club. Now that I'm looking at it, this club is a bit smooth bore. than light load now. It's just... Ah! Uh, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, I wanted to see if uh, there was an offhand punch. It was dumb for me. Oh well. I suppose I'll probably get a little bit of it off when he's uh, landing.
know, with the delay on that, I wonder if I couldn't be able to quit out before I finish the, what is it, the screen fade is that transitions to, oh, you died. So that I could get back to the menu for the new character creation and deletion faster. You know what? I haven't tried it yet. I might as well. Yeah, he does have two sub cars. Our souls two at um. They start with a straight sword and a curved sword. If nothing else, I'll be able to fiddle about the curved sword's moveset and see what kind of dual wielding mechanics they've got. Yep, two scimitars. Spinning slash is just the skill on either one. Not the worst of the non-metal shields I've had, but let's see, 2.77, 2.6, three pounds each. Oh, you charge it up, you get it. Oh, do I have to hold it down? Oh, okay. It said it had a follow-up. Additional input allows for a follow-up attack. Oh, it's the same button. Okay, I gotcha. So, screw your shield. Okay, no. At least... Yeah, these are connected to something. I thought this might be floating for a second there. I should not be alive after that stupidity that I perform. And he quickly corrected that. Okay, so that was neat, but yeah, definitely not at a uh, skill level where I can make that work for me yet. When he does present windows for me to get damage in, I bet that weapon's good for it. But primarily what I want to try now is a defensive playstyle with the backup heals and maybe get in a parry. Which will be quite difficult, I'm sure, with the uh, clonker shield.
so that might be it. This shield has an animation before it swings. Like, it puts it to your right, then it swings it, so the big deal on this could be that it's delayed compared to the instant parry frames. I bet the buckler has. That animation takes forever. It's like, oh, by the way, you can walk her. Like, Who the fuck cares? It takes too damn long. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely my best ticket to consistent defeat of him because it, it puts together everything that I've figured out so far. The parrying, the rolling, I've got a good shield to block the damage. I feel like with the higher base HP pool, nah, but with the, uh, with the healing from the Confessor is definitely the ticket. I think it probably equates to more total HP in the end, being able to recover a bit of it than having a, a higher starting block. Although I bet I take less wearing the knight's pants. I also just remembered how I wanted to open this. It'll cost me some healing juice, but sticking that thrust in it is definitely a solid chunk of damage that I just cannot ignore. Plus, when I eat her in the fight, if I uh, pull it out and do it again, I might be able to figure out whether or not I'm getting that 227 because I'm getting counter damage. Because he counts as uh, being open while he's landing like that. I don't know about that. I felt pretty good. I be too close to this. That was perfect. Ah, you dickhead! for the second swing at the first one whiffed. Hell, I should have gone for the second swing, period.
<laughs> Watch. My reward for defeating this douchebag is just like taking his tower shield or something utterly inane like that. Or it'll be a Sekiro all over again. And the only point to defeating this thing in the first run through is just the flex on it. Just that I'm sprinting while I'm crouched. The crouch is not changing anything. Well, fuck that up. Bummer. <laughs> I'm gonna go off on uh, the idea that maybe it's a bad idea to ever double heal <laughs> with that god awful animation. It's such a beautiful amount for such a long amount of time invested. But I bet when you're standing among the peasants, the dung covered masses, it sure is impressive looking. It's like, oh, magical heal. Oh. It's like it's a shitty heal, but it's more than they'll ever know about. So what threw it off last time, besides the fact that I just hit the wrong button, is that I'm trying to uh, space out my sprinting towards him from when it starts to drain, so that I can have it at max when I use the skill, so that I have a little bit less of a flow after the fact. Because I don't have a shield out. Again, I should stop rolling backwards and roll in. Yeah, see, that was bad. Going for a second swing there. I want to turn away. This extra change to any other one. I kind of love this attack. Still within roll in time. I 
I get more healing if I'm not moving? That's not that. Okay, I see. Sometimes he goes for a slash, sometimes he goes for a thrust. You have to be able to distinguish between them to get a good parry off. Way too early. I'm just done. All I'm ever gonna get. Yeah, that's what I get. It's like I don't know why I tried to commit to the heavy when I had a sliver of HP left. Prioritize the shield more than the back of the way. Ah, oh, I thought I had that parry. Maybe I'm not close enough when I'm doing that. Maybe I have to be right up on him to, to get the parry to trigger. Because in previous games, I couldn't... I can't tell you for sure off the top of my head which ones. I remember that... Some weapons, their parry hitbox would actually be further out for, like, your spears and your halberds. It might have been Dark Souls too. They made a lot of, like, intuitive little tweaks around the edges for stuff like that. Which is probably also why it feels like it moves a whole lot slower. It actually, like, there's no feel about it. Dark Souls 2's combat is definitely much more steady-paced. So I would guess off the top of my head that I'm thinking of that mechanic being in there. And with, like, most other weapons, like, you're basically one of parry, 
your window on the like the hand that holds the weapon like i pointed that out earlier at least as far as dark souls dark souls 2 uh possibly even dark souls 3 although i don't have as much experience with it rather than trying to like look at it so that you're parrying the weapon that's being swung at you you're like actually looking at the hand holding the weapon to figure out the timing I think maybe I just can't get the hair if I'm too far away from you. I definitely don't want to take the time for a fully charged heavy for that. I don't know why I tried that when I just figured that out. Like it was going really well too, but I made too many dumb mistakes. blind spot right directly in front of me. I don't like being just stuck in between the wall. Thank you for the shield champion. That feels like an attack that will probably change in a second phase. Just because it's so punishable like that.
I want to kick that so bad. Oh, you douchebag! That would have been a good parry, but you whiffed the attack! Like, that's the kicker, is like, the animation is already slow enough, but the recovery from it's also just as bad. So, positioning when attempting a fairy is of the utmost critical importance for this fight, it would seem. <sighs> Let's go. Stamina doesn't deplete when you're not in a fight. I'm getting used to that, it's weird. That attack is very rare. Weird sliding forward right attack. I lost all my stamina, but I don't think I carry that. for parrying is shit that parry. But it blocks physical damage. Such a tight one.
come to think of it, I don't remember that I actually ate breakfast when I woke up today. I just got up, swigged a drink, and then immediately jumped to Eldery. Maybe I would be doing better if I had some actual food in me. Let's say one or two more attempts, and then I'm going to run and get some food and see what Mother needed. could be doing that while I'm busy opening the door. At some point there, I tried to switch to a more upfront. It's like I'm mostly just defensively fishing for parries <clears throat> and uh, opportunities to safely attack. And at uh, some point in there, I was like, you know what? Let's try aggressive rolling again, because it does tend to work out pretty well. It's like you figure out the correct direction to roll forward, either left or right, and most of the attacks. The, like, there's a great big open space behind that dude with plenty of opportunities to deal damage because all of his combos take a while. Mind you, the boss is also capable of stopping the combos early. You have to play on your feet, but... Starts with, I don't know, base ten or something. Sucks because the first two attacks on that drain the fuck out of your stamina. I want to roll into that. Rolled way too early. Just didn't like being backed up against that wall.
Okay, one more, one more. But not like this. The idea is that I get my best parries off of this one. And I'm hoping that with the the improved parry framings on the buckler, I'll be able to more ideally test out if I'm just getting the timing wrong or if I really do have to be up close and personal on him to get the parry to work. Although with the chip damage I'm going to be taking, I'm not happy about uh, the fact that I won't... A, I don't have heal. B, I still have the same small health pool. And C, uh, chip damage whenever I fuck anything up. So I can't actually block that well with this. Yeah, that doesn't take FP. Cool. Awkward to ever to get, you know, available, but doesn't take FP. I'm gonna go with, I think you do need to be pretty aggressively up front to him. Although, that last one, I'm pretty sure I just fucked up. Anyway, that's, uh, that's gonna have to be a break for the moment, because I do feel a little hungry, having not eaten all day. Eh, I'll decide when I come back whether or not I want to grind him some more, or maybe jump back into the regular life. 